Hey everybody, my name is Doug Keeling and I'm back today with another tutorial on how you can create this sporty looking text effect. I've seen this uh, in multiple locations across the internet on various sites. Some are very complex and others are very simple. Really, it's just a matter of layering more and more details into the graphic to embellish the text. So let's go ahead and get started. And as we go along, if you decide you like this video, please consider hitting that like button or subscribing to my channel. Okay, so we've started out here with a 300 dpi document that is 10 inches square. And um, if you want to download the PSD, there will be a link in the description so you can download that and follow right along. Or you can do this on your own, it really doesn't matter. Um, there's a few things in, in here that are assets that you'll need, but you could also create them on your own. So. Um, I've deleted the background layer and I have just this BG folder for background and I'll just, ex these, these aren't important but I'll explain what they are um, just for the finished effect. So we've got a gradient that goes from transparent to like a gray or black. I think I used black and just, you know, went beyond the bounds of the document. So that's what this layer is. Then we have some noise which may or may not be hard to see and I just did add noise, um, did it like 5% or something like that that and I back the opacity down and the last uh, layer is just a 50% gray and you can easily fill a layer with 50% gray by pressing shift and pressing delete or backspace and then under contents just change from black or white or foreground color or whatever to 50% gray and uh, click OK so that's how we get all that the background really isn't important and then there's also an assets folder in which you'll see uh, kind of a pattern here that we're going to use for a perforated leather kind of effect and also a little image that we're going to turn into a brush on our st uh, and use on our stitching to kind of make that look a little more authentic. So uh, that's where we're at so far and let's, uh, let's jump right in here. So the font that I'm using is called Bebas New um, Regular and it is about 290 points I think is what I used um, we're using small caps so I used small caps and wrote out the word sports and then I increased the size of the S or didn't increase the size but I I changed the um, basically the spacing here of this first letter to make it uh, instead of the baseline of the S being with the P and everything I brought that down so that's why you can see this negative 0.67 uh, 4.67 points there to bring that S down kind of more centered um, with the rest of the text so that gets us there again the fonts Bebas new you can find it online and I'll have a link in the description it's a free font so let's go ahead and get started so the first thing I'm going to do here is take my text and there's not an italicized version of this font. So we're going to create sort of an italicized version by pressing command or control T to free transform. Go down to skew and then if you hold um, the alt key and click on the right anchor point go ahead and adjust that up and I think what I'll do is just go up you can modify this vertical value here we're going to go with negative 10 degrees so our text is being skewed up negative 10 degrees from the center and go ahead and press enter a couple times to lock that in place next thing we're going to do is convert this sports text to a shape so create a copy of that and just turn off the actual text layer right click on the new duplicate and, and um, you duplicate by pressing command or control J right click on that and press convert to shape so now we've got a shape and this is what we're going to use this will allow us to get nice crisp stroke lines around this text um, one of the things I don't like doing in terms of using layer styles is using strokes there because the strokes are always uh, rounded and I don't want the rounded especially when I've got a font here that has nice sharp edges like on the P and you know these edges aren't rounded so I want to keep that consistent so we've converted that to a shape and I'm just going to call this uh, sports shape just so I know what that is and I'm gonna create a duplicate of that and I'm gonna have a safety copy of both the original text and that shape layer to work with now I'm going to call this the the front face or the inner text face because this is going to be the text that's going to be on the inmost part of the of the font so we're just going to call this inner text face and we're going to apply a stroke to that 
Um, let's first of all change our color to uh, something else. Let's go to a green. And then we're going to add a stroke, which will also be green. And we're going to make that 14 pixels. And we're going to align that to the outside of the text. So there's our interface, uh, just as we needed it. And now I've set up a bunch of layer styles that you can download to go along with this. This will make your life a whole lot easier. Um, but I'll explain what the layer styles are. Uh, it'll just be, again, easier without having to go through each layer style because there are a bunch that we use uh, to achieve all of this. So I'm going to create or turn this into a smart object. And you can do that by right clicking on it and click Convert to Smart Object. And now I'm going to go up to my layer styles and apply the one that is called Inner Text Face. Okay, and you can see what it's done here. So first of all, it has applied a bevel and emboss, which is actually an, uh, an inner bevel. Um, and it's basically, we've changed the direction of it. If you look at the settings, we've changed the direction to be down so that, uh, so that it looks like it's kind of inset. And that'll be important for the 3D effect that we're going to use. We've also used a pattern overlay. And this is a leather pattern. It's a white leather. And so when you change the blend mode of that to multiply, it picks up the green that we added to the shape layer. And then we also have a little bit of an inner glow to try and pick up some of the edges, just a hair um, on some of these areas there to kind of highlight those. So that's what we're doing on the front face. Now. The next item we're going to do is make this text uh, 3D, kind of make it stand out. So let's just go ahead and duplicate this interface layer by pressing Command J. I'm going to drag it beneath there. And I'm also going to put that in a group. And we'll just call this Inner Text Extrusion. And I can delete the layer styles off of that. I don't need those in there. OK. And I'm going to hide the, uh, the first layer, the inner text face. Going to hide that real quickly. And then we're going to apply a new style to this. It's just basically a bevel and emboss. And I just have to see which one it is. Inner text extrusion single. That's the one we want. So if you didn't notice when we, when we added that, it added just a very slight little bevel and emboss and that's what we want to create um, some depth as we duplicate this over and over again to make it look sort of 3D. Now if you've watched any of my other tutorials I like sort of this step and repeat or transform again feature that Photoshop has and it's great for everything except a smart object. So it's kind of lousy that you can't step and repeat with smart objects but I can't seem to figure out any way of doing that um, so if you guys know of a way to do it, let me know. But in any case, what we're going to do instead is just manually duplicate this multiple times to create the 3D extrusion. So the easiest way I know how to do that is to hold down the Alt or Option key and then press the arrow keys. When you do that, every time you press the arrow keys, it creates a new layer. So what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit so we can see this and go down just uh, so we can kind of see better on the edges and you'll see how the bevel and emboss effect starts to build up and make it look like this is more 3D and give it some shading. Press down Alt or Option and then press the arrow key down and there you can see that it created a new layer for us and it moved it down one pixel. Now I'm also, without pressing Alt or Option, I'm going to press the right arrow key to move it over one pixel. So I just did that so again, we've got now the original layer, then we've got a new one that's moved down and right one pixel. So again, I'm going to press Alt and then and press down. Uh, and then I'm going to move it over without holding Alt one pixel because we don't need tons and tons of layers. And I'm just going to zip through this again, pressing Alt and down, then releasing Alt and pressing over uh, to the right one pixel. And that should be plenty right there. That gives us about 14 layers. And if you zoom out, you can see how this is. Again, uh, as with some of the other tutorials, the extrusion is going the wrong way. We actually want this to look like the topmost edge is the face and the bottom is, uh, is the, the back end of this extrusion. So select all of the layers in that group. Go up to Layer, 
arrange and down to reverse and it puts those in order for us so now we have the extrusion with the face on the on the front here at the topmost now there's also one other um, one other layer style that I've included and it's basically just a couple drop shadows on this overall group of the extrusion so just hover over these styles here so that you can find um, which one it is intertext extrusion group that's the one you want so go ahead and click on that okay so we've got our inner text with sort of the pressed leather look that we wanted um, and that's all coming together nicely the next thing we're gonna do is create the white outer text that's actually gonna look like it's behind this green inner text so let's go ahead and duplicate our sports shape layer I'm just gonna turn off the other ones real quickly so I can see it and we're going to name this outer text uh, face we'll hide the other one I've switched my color to my foreground color to white and I'm gonna press alt backspace or option delete and that fills this current shape with that we're gonna add the 14 pixel stroke in white and press enter and then we're also gonna change the alignment of that to be on the outside very good and now what we need to do is turn on our extrusion layer really quickly lower the opacity of that to about 50 percent and just so we can kinda of see what's going on and what we need to actually do is move this outer text so that the center of it is, is aligned with the very last layer here um, the best way to describe it is that if we're going to be adding more strokes around it it can't be around the top of the layer because that's uh, the top of this extrusion it has to be at the bottom be to, to make it look realistically like it's behind it it all makes sense once we do it but just let's go ahead and do it so select both the group for the inner text extrusion and you can see the opacity is turned down to 50 percent and the outer text face and then I'm going to switch to the move tool by pressing V and I'm going to align the left or I'm sorry the right edges and the bottom edges using the tools just up in the top and you can see that our white outer text face has gone to the very kind of aligned with the very last layer in the extrusion now again this will all make more sense once we go a little further I'm just gonna turn the opacity of my inner text extrusion back up and I'll turn on the inner text face and obviously we can't see the outer text face at this point but you will in a minute switch back to the path selection tool and let's change the size of that stroke to be 34 pixels now we'll add an extra 20 pixels of white spacing there behind that perfect so now if you zoom out you can see that um, that it looks like the green inner text is kinda centered inside the stroke of the white uh, outer text so let's go ahead and um, let's convert this to a smart object as well I have a keyboard shortcut set up for that but again just right click and press um, convert to smart object and then go up to your layer styles palette and let's add the outer text I think it's this one here yeah outer text face okay and if you zoom in a little bit you can see that we have the leather texture in the white area there so that's good that's what we want and we also have uh, a bevel and emboss again to make it kinda look inset there's one other thing that I'm gonna do here I'm gonna duplicate this inner or this outer text face by pressing command J and we'll just call this outer text face highlight and uh, I'm going to apply um, another layer style in here that is called outer text edge all that is is an inner glow that was added over top of this and the opacity or the fill of this highlight is turned down to zero so basically all I wanted to do was add an inner glow to that unfortunately the reason I can't do it on this outer text face is because the bevel and emboss actually renders above any any edge glow that you do an inner glow so it was completely washed out and hidden by the dark um, the dark uh, bevel and emboss feature that I was using there so that's why we have to create this separate highlight 
Now again, let's go ahead and create the 3D um, for this. So let's create a new group. We'll, we'll, cop we'll copy this and create a new group. So copy the outer text face by pressing Command J. And let's just pull that below it. Press Command G or Control G to put that in a group. And we'll call this outer text extrusion. And we can um, then apply some layer styles to that, again, that I've already defined. So we're going to click on this layer style up here, which is Outer Text Extrusion Single. And really, again, all this is doing is um, applying a bevel and emboss to that so that we can make it 3D. And also, uh, it looks like a color overlay I have on there. Um, so let's go ahead now and duplicate that using that, uh, that duplication method with, that we used before. So again, press the Alt key, press the down arrow, and you have to be on the uh, Move tool. So make sure your Move tool is selected. And again, press the down arrow while holding Alt or Option. So that created it. Uh, and then move it right one pixel. Then again, down, and and right down and right down and right and just keep doing that until you have 12 to 13 maybe 14 copies okay so I've got 14 made right now that gives it just the right amount of depth that we want and again we need to reverse these so go up to select them all all those layers in that group go up to layer arrange reverse and there we go. Now we have this nice 3D extrusion um, with some of the, uh, the shading that we we're looking for to make it look like it's standing out. Scroll up and let's just collapse this text, outer text extrusion layer and let's apply the, there's a, another um, layer style in here again that just has some drop shadows that gives it some depth from the background. So this is the outer text extrusion group layer style. And you can see there's just two drop shadows and there's one that's sort of closer and then one that's faded out a little more from the edge. Okay, so we have a pretty cool looking text effect right now and if you like it that way, you can leave it that way. But uh, we can also add some stitching to this to make it look even more authentic. So, let's go ahead and copy our sports shape layer by pressing Command J. Move it up to the top above everything else. Um, make it visible. And then uh, make sure you have your path selection tool uh, turned on, selected. We're going to go up to the fill and take that down. We're going to go to the stroke and we're going to go to a four pixel stroke and we're going to use a, just something, some kind of contrasting color that will stand out against the green. So there we go, we've got that. And then let's go ahead and change the settings on that so that it will align to the center of the line. And that looks pretty good. I'm just going to press enter and if you press enter again uh, and zoom in, it'll, it'll, if you press enter, it'll hide those lines. So we've got our, our line there that we're going to use um, as kind of the, the stitching thread. Um, so let's go ahead and rename this stitching. And we're going to put that in a group, so press command G. And we'll just call that stitching as well. Okay, the next thing we're going to do involves the small, um, the small little file or, or small little image that I've included in the assets folder, which is called the stitching brush. And at this point, I can't even remember where it's at. There it is. Uh, it's way up here. And it's really just a teeny little, it's almost like a half circle. Um, so it's got this little curve to it. And we're going to use that to stroke this path over top of it and add kind of a texture. Now, there are other ways of adding textures to things, but the problem is there's not really any good way of making a texture follow a path. So we want it so that this little curve here is applied right here. Um, if you can kind of visualize this, it'll go curve, 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 and it'll follow all around the direction of that, which is not typically how... how um, brushes work and how you know you, you can't typically stroke things like that in Photoshop but there is an easy way to do it so we've got our brush here all I'm gonna do or our brush image is not a brush yet we're gonna just command or control click on the preview and you'll see that highlights it that selects it and then we're gonna go up to edit 
define brush preset and we're going to call it stitching brush and then we just need to create a new layer um, we can we can turn off the assets folder now and hide that press command D to to deselect that um, and then we're going to create a new layer in the stitching folder above the stitching we're going to call this uh, texture and um, we're going to switch to our brush tool by pressing B go into the brushes uh, the brush palette and we're going to just change a couple options here. First of all, under the brush shape dynamics, we're going to go down to angle jitter, and under control, we're going to select direction. What that's going to do is going to make the brush go in whatever direction you're painting. So, um, for example, if we paint like that, you can see, well, it's hard to see that way, but let me, let me go ahead and change the other settings, and then you'll see a little better. Um, go up to brush tip shape now and go to spacing and change that to 220 percent and press enter and now let's go ahead and experiment with this there we go so now you can see that as I go in a circular motion this little teeny brush um, is changing the direction with me and that's exactly what I want to do but I want to do that on this path uh, the stitching path that we created so an easy way to do this is just go back down to our stitching layer uh, let's just zoom out and switch back to the direct selection tool by pressing A zoom out just a little bit more and what we're gonna do is select this path entirely and we're gonna copy it and paste it into the next uh, layer above so press command or control C once you've selected all the letters go up to our texture layer and press command or control V and it pastes it as a layer mask or a vector mask vector masks are very similar to layer masks except that they're vectors so you can actually edit the points of them um, and see what's going to be hidden or not hidden but the point is this is just temporary so all we're gonna do right now is right click in this layer and select stroke path and um, it's going to ask you what tool do you want to use well we want to use the brush and we've already got that stitching brush selected it's very important that you have the stitching brush selected because if you have another brush it's going to stroke the path but with the other brush and just won't look right so make sure you have the stitching brush brush selected and select the brush tool um, and then click OK OK and you can see it did something we're not sure exactly what so let's zoom in and the um, the vector mask is basically hiding everything that's outside of this path so everything that's outside of the words the original shape of the words is being hidden so let's just go ahead and delete that vector mask you can just drag it down to the trash and ask if you want to delete that press OK and now you can see we've got this tiny little um, brush pattern that goes all the way around each letter each um, part and it's exactly four pixels so it matches and it all stays within um, within the, the the stitching texture we have below it and um, I used black for my foreground color so obviously the the stitching texture is black and now I'm just gonna lower the opacity of that to about 30 percent we're going for subtle you know we don't want to kinda overdo anything there and then on the stitching itself there's a uh, layer style that I've created that again is just like a bevel and emboss to give it some depth and a drop shadow and I think it's this one right here yep there we go and again if you just hover over it it'll tell you um, what it is so um, I'm gonna press escape just to get rid of those lines and now if you zoom out you can see that we have this nice looking um, somewhat realistic looking thread that has these little these little half circles on it that make it look like it's maybe multiple threads woven together you know to create this little fabric that we're that we're using uh, you know as, as our thread so the next thing that we need to do is just create the holes for the stitching to look like it's going in and out of. So let's just go ahead and press Command J on our stitching layer to duplicate that. And let's drag it out of the stitching folder. And we will just call it stitching holes. All right. And we're going to adjust um, the settings here. We don't need, first of all, we don't need these layer styles so let's turn those off we're gonna go up to the stroke color and make sure your direct selection tool path selection tool is selected we're gonna choose black we're gonna leave it as a four pixel stroke 
we're going to leave it aligned to the center, but we're going to go under more options and we're going to make this a dashed line. We're also going to change the caps, change that uh, to round, and you'll see it kind of rounds each dash, and the corners will just make those round as well. And now what I'm going to do is decrease the size of my dash. In fact, I'm going to take it down to zero because what we really want is a perfect circle, which means that the stroke is wrapping around whatever the line is. So if the dash is at zero, we're going to get a perfect circle around the anchor point, if you can kind of envision that around this cap here. So we want a dash of zero, and let's make our gap maybe 10. Go ahead and click OK. And... Um, now we're just going to apply a layer style to that and I think it is this one right up here again let's hover over that yep stitching holes go ahead and select that to apply it to that layer and again all that does is apply in this case an outer bevel and emboss so that it kinda looks like there's a shadow on the upper side and a highlight on the bottom um, so you get a little bit of depth there and if you scroll out zoom out um, you'll see that you start to get that effect pretty realistically that it looks like the threads going in and out in and out all the way around so again if you get it to this point and you like it then you can be done or you can uh, hang with me and we're gonna add some perforations to the text to make the uh, the leather look like it's kinda like perforated so you'd like you'd see on a tennis shoe or um, a golf glove or something like that so let's uh, just zoom in a little bit and in the assets folder you will see a perforations layer and again all this is is just little teeny it's actually a shape layer um, and all it is is just teeny little circles that are like two pixels wide and I just duplicated them over and over again to make this grid uh, of those and what we're gonna do is apply those um, into the leather into the middle section okay so all you really have to do is just, uh, let's just pull that out of the assets group and turn that off. And what I want it to do is instead of having these, you can see they're going straight across, I have the, the text skewed 10 degrees. So let's just do the same thing on this layer. So press Command or Control T on the perforations and go down to skew and then just start dragging that. And I'm going to go up here so I can specify the vertical skew value. I'm going to make that negative 10 to match the text. And press Enter to lock that in. Switch to your Move tool and then move it right to where you need it so that the, so that the sports text fits. Uh, it fits over the sports text completely. And now we want to just mask this so that it only is going to apply to the inside of each letter. So you can select any one of these um, layers below that, that uses you know, the, the path of the original text. So let's just uh, con command or control click on stitching holes. And you'll see we get the selection there. And then what I'm actually going to do is um, take this path in a little bit further. Let's contract that. So go up to select, um, modify, and contract. And let's contract that by another maybe 10 pixels perfect and now with our selection here that's 10 pixels lesser in size go down and click on the layer mask button and now what that did was create um, a selection there so that everything outside of that is going to be hidden and everything in the white uh, inside of the text is going to be visible and at this point all you need to do is go up to the layer styles and click on the stitching uh, yep stitching holes where is it perforated leather and uh, again all this is a bevel and emboss effect it's applied onto that and there you can see that it looks now like for each one of these holes there's a little bit of a dimple there you know where that would have been pressed into to, to puncture um, and get that perforation and here we've reached home plate. Here's the final effect again. And one of the nice things that I forgot to mention is that if you open up the smart object that contains that inner text layer, the green, um, all you have to do is change the color of the fill and the stroke, and that will also trickle down and affect all of those um, extrusion layers. So the whole color will change for you there. And then if you want to change the, uh, the color of the stitching, uh, same thing, you just change the color of the stroke and you'll be in business that way.
If you like this video, please hit the like button down there and consider subscribing. And I'd always be interested in seeing what you guys do with these effects or where you take them, what you use them on. So uh, feel free to share links to your portfolios or whatever it is, you know, wherever you post your stuff online um, so that I can take a look at some of that stuff. I think that's it for now. So hey, take it easy and I'll catch you on the next video.